Hey what's up everyone and welcome to Daily Code Buffer. In this video we are going to see the working and implementation of the array double ended queue or array deck. Yes, it is pronounced as array deck. Deck. So what is array deck and how it is implemented in Java? So let's understand that. If you can see my screen, let me just show you the class array deck. So let me just create the array deck here. And with the name itself, we can understand that it is a combination of array and double ended queue. And here I need to pass the generic. So let me just pass the generics and array deck equals to new array deck. Okay. So this is the class. And if I open this class, you can see that this array deck class is implementing the deck interface. Okay. And it also has clonable and serializable. Okay. So that's all fine. But the main difference is double ended queue array. So that means it's the implementation of the resizable array. So the array is created within this array deck. You can see that this is the elements array created and it has the head and tail of the indices as well. So for the entire array, it will also maintain the head and tail. So that means you will be able to insert the data from the starting of the array as well and the ending of the array as well. And you will be able to delete the data from the ending as well and the starting as well. Okay. So these are the two ways you can insert and delete the data from the array itself. So that means this help us to implement the stack and queue using the array deck. So we'll see how we can use array deck to implement stack and to implement queue and how internally it differs within the implementation. Like whenever we are using as a stack, how it will behave and whenever we are using as a queue, how it will behave. So let's understand that. So ideally, as we saw that it is just a array of objects and it maintains the position of a head and tail. Let me just draw that so we will get more understanding. So by default, the size would be 16 and you can also pass the size in the constructor as well. And so it will grow in the size as twice when the size is full. So let me just create the array here. This is the array. My drawing is really bad. So don't mind, please. Okay. And within this array, what it will have is it will have the head as well, head index and the tail index. Okay, these two things will also have within this array deck and we can try to store the values from any particular point. Now, first, let's see how array deck can be used as a stack. So as stack behaves as a LIFO, that means last in first out. So whatever the element is been stored last, that will be removed first, right? So we can implement using the push and pop mechanism here. So within this array deck, we have the push and pop methods alongside there are other methods as well to insert the data like add first, add last, remove first, remove last, offer first, offer last and push and pop as well. Okay. So we will just use push and pop method to mimic the stack in using the error deck. So let me just do the examples. So let me just rename this just to have better name error deck. Okay. So what I'll do error deck dot push. Okay. So this push function, I'm just storing a here. Okay. Then array deck dot push I'm storing B and array deck dot push I'm storing C and after that I'm just popping the element out and let me just print array deck. Okay. So this is a simple example. I'm just trying to store three elements. I'm pushing three elements within, within the stack and I'm removing the last element which is inserted. So, okay. So after this, what I will see is I'll be having three elements and after that one element will be removed. So I'll just get these two elements. So let me just run this. You can see that I inserted A, B, C and C is removed. Okay. So you can see that this is working as the stack. So now let's see how it internally works. So here, when we are working as a stack, we have these two things, head and tail. So whenever we did push operation for A, okay? So whenever we did put push oper operation for A, the A is stored here and the head is pointed here, okay? Then what I did, I did again push operation for B. B is stored here and the head will point here. Okay, so let me just remove and head will point here. Then I added push again with C. So C will be stored here and head will be stored here. Okay, so you can see that your head is here and whenever you want all the values, it will be 
getting all the values remaining values accordingly okay so this is how the head will move when you are working with the push and whenever you will do pop operation that means to remove the first value okay so whenever you will do pop operation what it will do is it will change this value to null and it will remove the head from here and it will mark the head here to the previous of that so that means now this is your head this value has been removed now if you do again pop operation again this will be marked as null and the head will point to previous object simple as that okay so this way push pop will work when you are using array deck as the stack okay that's simple so this way your only head will move when you are doing the push and pop now let's take the example of the queue so let me just create the array here first so let me just uh, draw the array okay okay this is my array and it has the head and tail as well here now what i want is i want to use this array deck as the queue not as a stack okay so what i'll do is so queue is nothing but the first in first out so whatever is first uh, that particular object will be removed first okay so to make this particular operation as the queue rather than stack you just need to change the insertion order so rather than using the push what you will do is you will use the offer okay just change this okay so once you add these three offers okay these three values a b and c and whenever you will do pop a will be removed so let's run this so you can see that a is removed and b and c are there okay so now you can see that this is behaving as the queue so what is the difference now so whenever you will use offer to insert the values and pop to remove the values it will change your tail position not the head so let's see that so earlier you can see that the head was changed whenever we were using the push and pop but whenever we will do offer what we will do is offer of a a will be stored here let me just change the color so it's more visible okay a will be stored here and the head will be here and the tail would be also here so i'll just mark it as head and tail okay two things then again i'll do offer to insert another value that is b so b will be stored here and the tail will be here so you can see that tail is changed but the head remains the same okay again i will do offer c so i'm just storing c so i'll just go ahead and store the c in the next available index c and the tail will change i'll just remove the tail from here and tail will change to here simple so you can see that i am just inserting the object abc head is pointing to the first element and the tail is pointing to the last element inserted now the moment i do of a uh, pop pop is to remove so whenever we had done offer to insert the elements how pop will work is it will change the head position to the next position so so it will change the head position to the next position and this will be marked as null okay so now you can see that the first element which was inserted has been removed and now the head points to the second element when again you do pop element pop operation the same thing happens the head will point to this one and this will be marked as null simple as it you can see that so whenever you are doing the queue operation with offer and pop the tail will move and the head will move whenever you are doing the pop operation but whenever using the stack only head will move to maintain the insertion positions so that's how the internal working difference would be whenever you are using push pop or offer and pop but along with that there are a lot of different methods available so if i just show you the different methods array queue dot you can see that you can do push pop add operations you can do offer add all add first add last uh, get first get last offer first offer last peak you can do peak operations as well you can do peak last poll first poll last all these different op operations are there and the only difference between you can see that add and offer is add will throw the so if i go here offer offer just returns the offer last and you can see that offer last also calls the add last method and it returns true whenever the data has been added so you can see that internally it calls the different methods available but you can directly call those method as well so the only difference is whenever you are using the add operation it will throw the null pointer exception whenever you are trying to store the null values array deck doesn't allow storing null values because internally it changes the value as null to maintain the positions to check all those values so it doesn't allow the values to store as a null but whenever you are using offer it doesn't throw the values it will just return true or false that the values are inserted or not so 
if you want that it should throw the error then you can go for the add operation and if you want that it should not throw the errors you can go for the offer method accordingly whichever is feasible you can go ahead and use it but error x main use is to use this uh, class as the stack or the queue because very easily it provides a different methods to handle it and it's very efficient as well so this is all about the internal working of the array deck and how the different methods are there for you to work with the array deck you can either go with push pop and offer and pop just to identify the different things uh, stack and queue implementation so if you have enjoyed this video then give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos you can also join my channel by clicking on the join button and you can also click the thanks button to donate as well so that's been it in this video i will see you in the next video till then happy coding bye bye